Welcome to the first video of section 3.2 on solving linear systems. The goal of this section is to develop a systematic approach to solve linear systems with many variables and many equations. To understand how this approach works, we will use the same example that we used in the previous video. Let's get started. In the previous video, we looked at the following linear system. We had two equations and two variables. The first equation was 3x plus 2y is equal to 1, and the second equation was x minus y is equal to 2. We have solved this linear system and found that a single point, x equal to 1 and y equal to minus 1, satisfies both equations. I'm going to show you another method to solve this system. It will seem more complicated at first, but will make solving systems with many equations and many variables feasible. So the first thing that I want you to observe is that I can change the order of the equations without changing the solution set. So I can replace the linear system as written with the following, x minus y is equal to 2, and 3x plus 2y is equal to 1. So here, this is the first observation, which we'll record at the bottom, which just says that the order that we list the equations doesn't change the solution set. Okay, so that's the first thing that we're allowed to do. The next thing that we're allowed to do is we're gonna take a scalar multiple of one of the equations. And I'm gonna take the scalar multiple, I'm gonna multiply equation one by minus three. That will leave me with minus three x plus three y is equal to minus six. You'll see why I picked minus three in just a minute. Now what I'm gonna do is I'll leave equation one alone as x minus y is equal to two. And to equation two, I'm gonna add the red version of equation one. This gives me zero x plus five y is equal to minus five. So the reason that I picked the scalar minus three is because that way when I added two equations together, I would zero out the x variable, which we don't even have to write. simplifying the linear system. This is observation two. Adding a scalar multiple of one equation to another equation doesn't change the solution set. Now, when I go back to the linear system, I look at the second equation, 5y is equal to minus 5, and I know that I could scale that second equation by 1 fifth, resulting in something simpler, which is that y is equal to minus 1. Notice that this is the exact same y value that we got in the previous video. I'll leave the first equation alone, and we'll record this as observation three, that scaling an equation by a non-zero, this part is important, scalar, does not change the solution set. Finally, when we go back to look at our linear system, it looks like we can do one more operation of type two, which will simplify things even further. I can add the second equation to the first equation, leaving me with x is equal to one and y is equal to minus one, which is the exact same solution that we saw in the previous video. Okay, so now what I wanna do is I wanna show you how we will handle these type of operations using what are called matrices. So in this first pass, you don't need to be too stressed out if you don't understand everything, but I'll try to show you where we're going. So the first thing is, is that we have two equations here. Usually we call them equation one and equation two. What I'm gonna do is for each equation, I'm going to record the coefficients and the constants without the variables. So I'm gonna rewrite the equation three x plus two y equal to one as three, two, one. 
I have to remember in my head that the three is the coefficient to x, the two is the coefficient to y, and the one is the constant on the right-hand side of the equation. I'm gonna do the same thing for the second equation. The first coefficient is one, the second coefficient is minus one, and the constant is two. One, minus one, two. I'm gonna put this in what's called a matrix by using these square brackets, and I'm gonna distinguish between the coefficients and the constants by putting a dashed line. Sometimes you might see curly brackets, and other times you might see a solid line, but it has the same meaning. Now, instead of talking about equation one and equation two, I'm gonna talk about row one and row two. So back to the operations that we did on the left-hand side, the first thing that we did is that we swapped equation one and equation two. Here, I can swap row one and row two. So I'll rewrite the matrix as one, minus one, two, and three, two, one. I'm gonna put a tilde between the two matrices because we'll use the tilde to indicate that we've done one of these allowed operations that doesn't change solution sets of linear systems. Now I have a new row one and a new row two. Notice that if I look at the coefficients, one, and minus one, I can find those at the first equation over here, and I can find the constant two in the first equation there, and the same thing for the second row. The three and the two are the coefficients of the new second equation, and the one is the constant for the second equation. The next operation that I'm gonna do is I'm going to take row two, and I'm gonna replace it by row two plus minus three times row one. So as before, we added a scalar multiple of the first equation to the second equation. I'll do the exact same thing, just dealing with rows. So what I get, the first row stays the same, and the second row becomes zero, five, and minus five. Again, the numbers one and minus one are the coefficients for the first equation on the left-hand side. The numbers five and zero are the coefficients for the second equation. And the numbers two and minus five are the constants. The next thing that we did is we scaled row two by one-fifth. So we scale row two by one-fifth. This gives us the new matrix one minus one, two, and zero, one, minus one. We can read row two now as zero x plus y is equal to minus one, giving us exactly the y values equal to minus one as we found. Finally, in the last step, what I'll do is I'll take row one and I'll replace it by row one plus row two, leaving me with the final matrix, one, zero, one, zero, one, minus one. And now from this new matrix, I can read off what row one says, which is that x plus zero y is equal to one, giving me x is equal to one as before. In the next video, we will define the augmented matrix and coefficient matrix of a general linear system, and we will start to see how to apply the methods from today's video to linear systems with more equations and more variables.